For the hindsight streamer pattern that you'll be tying today, you're going to need 6 aught gray thread, some size 6 gamakatsu octopus hooks in nickel, number 3 fish masks with earth eyes, zapagap, some pearl blue angel hair, and some natural gray pine squirrel zonker strips. This next slide is in text, so it allows you to pause if you need to take a look at it to get your materials ready. Start by debarbing the octopus hook and getting it situated in your vise. When you attach the thread to the hook, you're going to want to only cover the front half of the hook shank with the gray thread. Once you have that front half covered, you'll wrap the thread forward to about a quarter of that distance or roughly 3 16 of an inch behind the eye of the hook. At this point, Take a small amount of Zappa Gap and lay it along the back half of the thread that you've laid down. This is going to help to secure the angel hair that you're about to tie in. The clump of angel hair should be roughly an eighth of an inch in width when it's firmly tied down. Make sure that this is adhered and tied only to the top of the shank. You don't want it to slip, slide around it, or move to the bottom. It needs to be on top of the shank here. When you have it secured, you're going to take your scissors and cut it at an upward taper. The bottom of the clump should be approximately a half inch long, and the longer taper on the top should measure at about three quarters of an inch. At this point, you'll take your tail section of pine squirrel. Notice that it's cut to a point or a taper on the back end. The length of the strip should be approximately two times the length of the hook shank. And you'll secure this with firm wraps directly on top of the angel hair at the same tie in point. Once you have the tail secured, take your second pine squirrel strip, which should be a little bit longer, it'll make it easier to manage, and you're going to once again secure that to the top of the previous pine squirrel strip. At this point, wrap your thread forward all the way until it comes down on the bare hook shank in front. <clears throat> take some zapper gap. And you want to put a reasonable sized drop on top and on the bottom of the material clump. This is going to help to lock that pine squirrel strip in place as you wrap it forward. As you bring this around, you're going to want one full wrap over the top of the butt end of your materials. As you come back around, that strip needs to be wrapped directly on top of the bare hook shank. And at this point right here where I'm holding it, is where I'm going to secure that. I like to take a little saliva on my fingers to brush back those fibers. They tend to kind of stick out and get in the way if you leave them unattended. So lock that down with several thread wraps. When you have it firmly secured, clip off the excess that's sticking out in the front. At this point, you brush back the remaining pine squirrel fibers. Build up a decent body of thread securing all your materials. And once you feel that you have that secured, you whip finish or half hitch to hold that in place and snip your thread. Now, the fish mask that's going to come into picture here shortly, when you order these, they'll come separately with the eyes not attached to the fish skull. So as I slide this on here shortly, the eyes have already been attached. That's something that you'll have to do on your own. You can use either a uh, clear cure goo, or I like to just put a small drop of zap gap on the back side of the eyes as I set them into the sockets. Prior to sliding that fish mask on, you're going to put a substantial drop on the top and on the bottom of zap gap onto that uh, material clump. That's going to hold the back side of that fish mask in place as you initially slide that over the eye of the hook. Once you have that firmly in place, you take the gray 6 out thread, reattach it just in front of the mask, and very simply all you're going to do here is build a sufficiently sized thread head to keep the mask from moving forward or coming loose. Once you have the thread head built, you can snip the thread, and I like to put a thin coat of Zappa Gap on the thread head in front of the mask to help it bond in place. 
once again the colors for this pattern are endless you can mix and match to uh, make it work for any bait fish in your home waters